Hey there, how's it going? Well, I'm about to head out. I'm gonna go to the bins and try to find some more tapes and and a few other things. Um, but I got some really good responses to uh, my video about colleges, and I wanted to uh, discuss them real quick. Um, first one comes from my friend Tony on Google+. He says, the reason you allow idiots to speak is not to convince the speaker that they are wrong. It's to teach the students how to recognize idiotic ideas themselves. If you don't expose them to such ideas in college, they will be relatively helpless against them in the real world. So the more they hear of them, the less powerful those idiotic ideas will be. Good point. Very good point. He continues to say, I think it's especially powerful when the ideas are super duper ridiculous. Because the more ridiculous they are, the more the rhetorical structure can be seen for what it is. So the, pers so the persuasive methods of the Flat Earthers, for instance, can be compared to those of creationists or racists and act as kind of a lever to unmask the Ill illegitimacy of those less obviously ridiculous ideas. And I thought that was, I thought that was well said, although something that can come into question from what he said there is, uh, you know, what, what declares that something is racist? And people will have a bunch of discussions about that. Um, the other uh, comment that uh, came about that I thought was really good was from No More Dogma. And he said, if the students or staff find it relevant, anyone should be able to speak. That is what is relevant. Obviously, many agree. It is often the students who will pay for this. You're also stating that mainstream ideas need to be questioned. Bottom line, when we start dictating what ideas are valid and which aren't, it becomes messy. Who decides? What is allowed when some ideas are banned? And finally, what should be done if people who aren't allowed to speak try to speak anyway? Good good questions and that is a reasonable position as I said um, as my reply it's a reasonable position good questions these are things I wish would get talked about more instead of people just I don't know this 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 whole kind of discussion can get so volatile so let's ask more questions so maybe some of the larger questions and larger declarations can be diffused a little bit so we can actually get to the bottom of some of this. So, now, 1-800-STOMP uh, uh, started going, oh, so I started off uh, with, so outside the hyperbolic examples, um, the real question you're asking is, should we allow conservatives to speak on campus? No, that's, that's not what I'm asking. I... I um, and I know that you're you're making you you make a number of of uh, uh, your your post is long. You you do make a, a number of statements. I will reply to them in text, but um, no, no, that's that's not what I'm asking. I'm not asking whether conservatives should be allowed to speak on campus. Um. I'm asking whether or not stupid ideas should be able to uh, to be presented on campus. Things that people know are stupid. And I think Tony's answer was the best one, honestly. Um, if something is racist, then we need to, you know, recognize how it is racist. If something is just stupid, we need to recognize that it's just stupid. Um, some of the things that uh, people in the camp of Milo uh, shove forth are bigoted. They're kind of bigoted. And we need to show where they're bigoted, why they're bigoted, and figure out how to keep others from going into that mindset. I mean, someone who's bigoted, you're, it's going to take a very extreme incident to get those people to see otherwise. It happens, it does happen, but it usually doesn't happen out of just a conversation. It, that's just not how it usually goes down. Um, but it can. 
but I do think the most important thing is for people to be able to point out when something is false. So, anyway. <laughs>